It's fantastic to see so many people here. I'm just really grateful that you managed to come on such a beautiful day. Um, it's far more fun in here than outside in the sun. And it's really, really welcome to everybody. Uh, and if any time during the um, AGM, which is supposed to last two hours, if you ever have any questions or anything you know that you want to say, don't worry about putting your hand up. You know, it's just a free for some extent. And, you know, just enjoy it. Because you're going to find out lots of information about recovery. But we spread the word about how people can recover from mental health problems. And really, you know, one of the main aims that we feel so important today is about campaign against force and fear. Because we do support people in the community. There's about seven or eight people we support at the moment in the community. And it's really incredibly interesting when you go and meet people because you find out things that perhaps you wouldn't have realised, but because you can compare people, you can see in a way what's going wrong in the system and what the community is doing wrong. And it seems to point a little bit at the fact that these antidepressants, they could work much better if people got the support they were asking for. But sometimes people are just told too much what to do and it needs to be a little bit more about how people have choice and control in their life and then they have a better mental health and, and a better way of life, really. So that, that's one of the things that we feel is important. And what we do in the charities, the creative therapists can actually help us to realise that there's another way to recovery from mental health, which is separate from the medical model, and it's called the recovery process. And that's all about being very creative and gaining confidence through doing things that really give you a buzz because you've created something. Well, it's music, and Nick's really into music, and he, he's been doing music therapy with us in the charity, which has been great fun. Kieran's really into art, and, you know, it's, it's actually, when you're doing these things, your mind is still. And my big baby are the dogs. Where are they? They are a fantastic baby. And I wake up, I still, I recovered 14 years ago from mental health problems. But I still sometimes wake up in the morning and I was crying, literally for, I wondered why, but I think it's because of all the excitement of the AGM and, you know, because I've been seeing a doctor with one of our clients and supporting her. It's very challenging seeing a doctor. It's really quite scary in some ways. And the dogs were that right there comforting me, jumping onto my lap. They're not like too big, but they're wonderful. They really cheered me up just like that. The recap project. So we support a survivors with one hour a week until they get a personal budget, and then they could get between two and twenty hours support. And it really does help when you've got ten hours a week. It will really help somebody, and we really care. So we will turn up if someone rings up and says they're really feeling, you know, they need support. As long as I'm not, you know, completely doing something else, I will go. Right this morning, I went to half past seven, and I was supposed to be going up this afternoon. So, I mean, it does work. The people can recover through having close relationships with people. That can really help them to get their confidence back and enjoy their life. Um, you can see a list of fundraising events that we've done over the last six months or so. Um, one of my roles in the charity is to make sure that all these events are properly organised and we have the correct licensing in order to go along and do things like street collections and have market stalls and um, speak about what the charity does and spread awareness on mental health issues and generally kind of help fight discrimination and stigma on the subject. Recently went to the Times Change Village uh, which came to Leicester Caribbean Carnival on Saturday which was quite, quite good fun. Um, we were part of the surgery, it's basically a, a virtual village they set up. Uh, with a surgery, a human library, as I explained just then, people talking about their life experiences. Uh, they had a village green where people could participate in art, arts activities. Um, and as I say, we're in a surgery which was all about information for uh, local services and signposting to local services. So ourselves as a local charity are able to offer help and support to people who might be uh, vulnerable in the community. And also there were I mean, Leicester Partnership Trust should have been there, but unfortunately didn't manage to make it. And a couple of other organisations. On average, we raise about one, one to five hundred pounds. I think generally in between there, on average, I'd say we make about two hundred pounds at each of those each of those fundraising events, depending on which area we go to and how affluent it is and how generous people are feeling and that kind of thing. 
Um, obviously, we really appreciate any contribution we have from the general public or from our volunteers, our dedicated team of volunteers. Um, and um, it's a, you know, we, we really thank anyone who has helped us with this. We appreciate it very much and hope you enjoy being a part of it as much as we enjoy your company's positivity and good work on these outings. Uh, and we must forget how useful these fundraising activities are to raise awareness on mental health um, and our campaign for well, freedom of force or increased freedom of choice, I like to think of it as. But on the communication side of things, um, I send a lot of emails and text a lot of people organising different events and activities that we have on a day-to-day -day basis, which other people have with as well. Um, my job might also mean passing on the right messages to people when they need them and just making sure people know things when they need to know them.